Hello and welcome to another episode of the Kid Stories Podcast. I'm Phil Bechtel. Let's get into some shout-outs. Lula Garcia enjoys the show. Lula shared her version of The Lady in the Lake and it was awesome. Thanks for that, Lula. I think if you were a character in the podcast, you'd be the guardian of a tiny island on the dark side, where you protect all the creatures there from the dangers that lurk below in the water. Thanks for listening, Lula. And Briar Rose and Huckleberry left a voice message on the website with a recommendation for a story. That's awesome, you two. I think if you were both in the stories, you would be wood sprites who live in the dark forest and play pranks on all the cave trolls there. Thanks for listening, Briar Rose and Huckleberry. Today's episode was written with ideas from the creative mind of Zoe McBride. It was great to make a story with you, Zoe. Today's episode is titled Mountain Madness, Part 1. Molly and Zoe were bustling around their quaint little shop, Molly and Zoe's Magic Bites. This wasn't just any shop. It was a delightful combination of a potion shop and a goofball restaurant. Nestled at the base of the great mountain on Victoria Island, the aroma of chocolate filled the air, and shelves on the walls were filled with pouches and jars of strange and useful potions. As Molly handed out a tray of shiny chocolate goofballs, she gave a gentle whisper to her shop cats, whiskers and paws. The cats listened and leaped up to some high shelves to fetch some potions and ingredients for customers. Meanwhile, Zoe was in the kitchen, her hands covered in chocolate as she expertly crafted more goofballs. With a concentrated look, she used her telekinesis to float plates filled with these delicious treats out to the eagerly awaiting customers. The goofballs were some of the best on the island, but sometimes people came just to watch the show. Plates floating out from the kitchen, pets running around doing chores, and Zoe and Molly busy as ever bustling through the shop. The day wound down, and finally Molly turned the open sign to closed when they cleaned up the shop. They locked up, grabbed their adventure bags, and headed up to the mountain. It was pretty sunny today, said Zoe. I bet there's still some stone blossoms on the west side of the mountain. Let's see if we can get some before the sun sets and the blossoms close. The mountain was the perfect place to find sugar root, moon moss, stone blossoms, and other potion ingredients. Most days, the girls would scramble up the mountain and gather as much as they could before it got too dark. Molly, with a couple of hamsters peeking out from her pouch, led the way. These were not ordinary hamsters. They had a knack for finding sugar root. As they reached the rocky parts of the mountain, Molly released the hamsters. Their tiny noses twitched as they scurried among the rocks, searching. They all spread out a bit among the rocks and boulders, Molly and Zoe gathering whatever useful plants they could find. Suddenly, Zoe heard the high-pitched squealing of the hamsters. Hey, that doesn't sound like regular squeaking. Let, let's go see what's wrong. Molly silently agreed and the girls began running toward the sound of the panicked hamsters. The terrain at the base of the mountain was inconsistent. Some parts were just flat stone. Other parts were like uh, walking on gravel. And in some places there were huge boulders that required you to slink between them or climb on top of them. As the girls approached a cluster of these huge rocks, the hamsters came skittering out from between some of the boulders. And Zoe was right. They were squealing in fear. They ran right to Molly and leaped in her arms as she knelt down. The little furballs burrowed and wiggled their way between her arms, trying to hide. Zoe looked all around, trying to get eyes on whatever it was that had scared the hamsters so bad. The girls heard it before they saw it. A pounding and scraping like someone rubbing huge rocks together. They each took a few steps back before they saw it. A kind of rock beast, like someone made a large human by sticking rocks together. This monster was about twice as tall as the girls, and as far as they could see, made entirely of stones. Molly's protective instincts kicked in. She clutched the hamsters close to her chest as she and Zoe backed away slowly. They didn't want to act too quickly, since they had encountered lots of creatures in these mountains that seemed terrible at first, but had no bad intentions. But the rock monster had bad intentions. It lifted its head up and spotted them as it came around from behind a massive boulder. The rock monster roared loudly, even though it didn't seem to have a mouth, and it bounded toward them. 
The ground shook with each step and it started swinging its stone arms at them before it was even close enough to land a hit. Run! Zoe yelled to Molly and they turned and raced back through the boulders. But the creature was faster than they thought. They could hear it stomping and roaring just behind them. We can't outrun it, Zoe, Molly yelled. And Zoe knew she was right. If the beast was keeping up this well while they were able to dodge among the boulders, then it would surely catch them once they reached the open flat part of the mountain base. They had to fight. Zoe, her face set with resolve, focused her mind. And with a sweeping gesture, she lifted nearby boulders, sending them flying toward the rock monster. It was very difficult to lift these massive stones with her mind certainly more difficult than floating a plate of goofballs out to a waiting customer. But Zoe needed to push her magic to the limits to escape this monster. The boulders smashed against the rock monster, slamming it into another nearby boulder. But the mindless beast kept coming. Molly knew it was time for their secret weapon. She whispered to the hamsters, Pew, pew! The hamsters understood the command. Molly held the hamsters in her folded arms like a baby and from there they popped their heads up and looked out to the charging rock monster. Suddenly, laser beams shot out of the hamster's eyes, blasting the rock monster. The little furballs aimed for the spaces between the rocks of the beast, and it began to come apart. Zoe continued her telekinetic boulder attack. Another boulder smashed into the beast, and it came apart entirely, sending stones of all sizes flying and a messy pile of stones lay where the beast once stood. Catching their breath, Zoe looked at Molly in awe. Oh my gosh, how did you get those hamsters to shoot lasers from their eyes? I didn't know they could do that. That was awesome. Molly grinned. Practice. And I put potions in their food every day. Well, maybe you should put potions in my food every day, said Zoe. I'd love to be able to shoot lasers from my eyes. I don't think it's safe for humans said Molly. The girls fast walked back down the mountain, looking back periodically to make sure there were no more rock monsters. What was that thing anyway? Molly asked. No idea, said Zoe. I've never seen one before, and I hope we never see one again. The two returned to their shop and went upstairs where they lived. Their plant hunting was cut short. They'd have to try again tomorrow night, hopefully they'd have more luck. The end. Thanks for listening, friends. The website is kidstoriespodcast.com. Send all your drawings and shout-out requests to kidstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Adios.